Good evening. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. My name is Barry. And I'm Jay. And together we are Matusu Crafts. Yes, welcome to our channel. We're in the band Stampin' Up! Dem demonstrators based in the UK. So if you live in the UK, France, Germany, Austria, Netherlands, Belgium or Ireland, you'll be able to purchase current Stampin' Up! products from our online shop. This is the current host code which can be found on our website at mitosucrafts.com to receive a handmade card from us the following month or any extra gifts if your order qualifies. So today it is Fun Fold Friday, which Barry does every other Friday. Yeah, I try and do it every, um, if I can, I try and do it every second Friday. So I just saw a question pop up there from Christine, actually. So um, good slip into that a little bit. So um, besides Sundays and fr um, Sundays and Wednesdays, we still, every other Friday we do, I try and do this if I've got an idea. So the next unfold will be in two Fridays time. Should be, so not next week because we're in um, front stage, but it'll be the week after. That's the idea anyway. It doesn't always work out that way, but yes. So um, yeah. Yes, so thank you for joining us. We'll say hello to those of you who have joined us and commented because as we're live, we might as well. Yes, we're live in both places as well. So we are live also mm -hmm. on Facebook as well as YouTube. Um, the YouTube comments are the ones which we will like more than likely see, but I have seen a couple there. I'll say hi to the ones on them, um, which I've seen on Facebook to start off with, which is Lisa and Linda. Hello. So um, they're the two I can see so far, but um, Jay will go through and do the do the harder one, do the YouTube ones. Yes, so we have Valerie, hello, Christine, Linda, we also have Donna, Betty H, hiya, uh, and it jumps. <laughs> Louise, hello, Teresa, Darcy, Sandra, Linda, Linda, um, Pauline, and that is everyone. Thank you so much. Lovely. So, um, so yeah, so I'm going to be doing a, as you can see from the title, it's a cradle easel card. Um, this is cased from the lovely Sarah Sayers from Kiss Creative. So, um, we were talking about it the other day, and I said I'd like to case that as well. So, um, this is a this is a take on hers. Um, the, I'm going to be working in inches for this um, project, but the centimetres are all down below in the description, as well as the link to um, Sarah's original post as well. So if you want to go and see the other projects which she did with this, she's done some amazing variations of it as well. So go and check her out afterwards. And uh, we've also got Melissa and Julie who have joined us over on Facebook. So hi, Melissa and Julie. Hello. So, um, yes, I think we will crack on and let's, let's have this quick demonstration for you. Shouldn't be too long, but we will see. Famous last words. So I'm going to be using the lovely Christmas banners stamp set right here. Um, I'm going to be using this one. Um, so that pairs with some lovely dies, which coordinates with all of this and this lovely, um, stamped leaves and berries and holly and so on so that's what I'm going to be using just for a little bit of decoration so the bits I'm going to be using is and you're going to need a little bit of basic white for your stamping okay so some scraps will do I'm going to be using this lovely snowflake DSP as well so it's this lovely um, vellum it's got this nice flocking on it careful um, <laughs> so it's this one right here so I don't know if not you can see it. you can't really I don't know if not you can see the texture through this but it's got this lovely felt touch to it so that's what I'm going to be using tonight and I'm going to be pairing that with Pacific Point cardstock so the reason I've gone with Pacific Point is that it showed up quite nicely um, on this if I used anything lighter I think the pattern got lost so I've gone with a darker color underneath so it shows through this lovely white of the snowflake dsp so you've got some other designs in this as well um you've probably seen jay made the lovely one with this um what's it candy canes the other day and turned it into a birthday card how he turned where how he got the idea for turning candy canes into birthday candles no idea um but he used this one here because again this isn't really christmas specific it looks like snow but it's also another it can be used for anything else, as Jay demonstrated. And you've got the other one, which is the snowflakes, but this has got the silver foiling on this. Um, maybe, actually, I might use this one right here, because I've done my example is in 
this one so I can show you my example. I might actually use this paper right here for this one rather than the other because then I can then show you the two with how they work out. So that's what I'm going to be using. I'm just going to just put some stuff back. I'm going to get this scrap bit out just in case I need it. And that's what you're going to need. So as I said, I'm going to be working in inches, um, but the centimetres measurements are all down below as well. And on Sarah's post, she has um, she, uh, her video demonstration is in centimetres. Um, but I, for some reason, I, I work better in inches for some reason. But as you know, I flick between the two quite easily as well. So, um, yeah. Right, so let's start off with my card base. So I'm going to be taking my Pacific Point. And I am going to cut this at four and a quarter inches. And I need four of these, four and a quarter by four inches. So four and a quarter by four. And four. So you're going to need to, um, and so I need two of those, sorry, not four. So four and a quarter by four, two of those. And we need another piece which is measuring four and a quarter. So which is that one there by two and a half. So that was four and a quarter by two and a half. And I will need three pieces measuring four and a quarter by three. So I've got some scraps lying around which I'm taking up so I can get two out of that one there. Let's make sure I made a four, four and a quarter. And let's do a four and a quarter. By three on this one. some stuff to one side so that's what you have got for these ones right here so let's just put all of these out so you've got two pieces four and a quarter by four you have got one piece measuring four and a quarter by two and a half and three pieces measuring four and a quarter by three inches okay that's what you have got so we're going to do some scoring first so we're going to do some scoring on the first one, so the four and a quarter by four, we want to score these at half an inch on both sides on the short edge, okay? So the four inch edge, we want to do that at half an inch on both sides. And do that on both of them. So make sure you're doing this because there's only a quarter of an inch between it, so make sure you are scoring on the, the four inch edge. On the piece here, the smaller piece, the four and a quarter by two and a half, you want to score this at half an inch, one and a quarter inches, and two inches. Okay, that's that one. And then these three pieces right here, you want to be scoring these at one and a half inches, all on the short edge. Basically in half of these ones, so. And so that's all of our elements done for that one. So whilst I've got the designer series paper and my trimmer right here, I'm going to cut myself some stuff out of this. So I want to cut myself a piece at four inches. So you can get, um, obviously it's, uh, it comes in a 12 by 12, so you'll be able to get f um, quite a few, because obviously you can split this at least into three. Um, so four inches. And then I want to have four pieces measuring four inches by one and a quarter. And a 
back, you try and pay attention to how you're doing this as well to make sure the pattern flows. So keep them all on top of each other. Because if you want to make sure that they line up a little bit later on, you can do. So four pieces measuring four by one and a quarter. I need two pieces measuring four by two and three quarters. So that's those ones right there. And I will need two pieces measuring four by one quarter. So I'm not really. It's just some tiny little bits. So four by one quarter. Just a little bit of decoration for later on. Just need to. Just get a little bit of tape on this one because it's a little bit difficult for me to hold down. So I'm just going to just tape it onto my trimmer just so it doesn't move. There we go. And I may, if I can, I think I need these to be four eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna cut another couple right here at. I'm just going to. I'll, I'll work that out afterwards on those ones. I will see what the measurements actually come out at because that's it depends on how you stick it. All right. So you've got all of those pieces right there. So you had four pieces, four by one and a quarter. Two beast pieces, four by two and three quarters, and I've just got a funny thing. I may have actually just cut that to the wrong size. No, I didn't. I did. And two pieces measuring four by a quarter of an inch. So maybe next time start with the smaller pieces. Yes, next time it would be easier if you were to start with the smaller pieces first next time, um, because you've got more to actually hold on to. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to take these ones right here and we are going to fold and burnish these. Okay. I'm kind of going to do this part and then stop and then do the stamping and then do the next part so it allows this part to dry up. And what you want to do is you want to stick two of these together. So you're doing it so that the score is meeting on the inside. So some glue along one of these. Oh. And then stick this to this. Like so. So we've got any new ones on Facebook and YouTube? Joining us, Jay. Okay, so you've got that one there, and then we're going to stick the other one to this side over here. Melissa, Julie. Hi, Gay, Melissa. Hi, Julie. And hi, Gay. Veronique. And Ver Ver Veronique, did you say? Yeah. Hello, everyone on Facebook. So that there is all being stuck together. So I'm just going to pop them, those to one side for a moment, and I'm going to let that dry whilst I do some stamping. So what I'm going to do is I am going to stamp the banner first. And I'm going to be doing this in a verse mark, okay? So I have already gone ahead and I've gone and pre-done this, but I'm going to show you because I wanted to make sure on my prototype it slipped a little bit. So I needed to make sure it was perfect for this demonstration. Okay. So verse mark on here. I would also just take myself my embossing buddy and just prime my paper. Okay, that there, and then I'm just going to then just stamp this down. Okay, so that's that one. 
So we've got lots of fireworks going off in the background. I do apologise for the uh, for the banging you may hear. It'll see us Guy Falls night tomorrow evening. Um, so, but we're having it all tonight for some reason. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I am going to use silver, and I'm just going to pour this on here. And I will just decant this back in. Like so. Okay, very full tub, so get your lid back on that very quickly before you spill it, because that's a lot to lose. Um, and then we're just going to heat set this. So if you've never seen heat embossing, you will need a heat tool. And this is now going to turn from this matte powder into a nice shiny powder. So I'm just going to use my heat tool, get it warm, and then let's melt this. And there we have it. All right, so you can see that then has gone from that lovely matte to this lovely silver. There you go, that's caught the camera. Really, really stunning. I just realized that this may clash with this paper a little bit because I'm gonna have silver and silver. So um, we'll see how it looks. But I have done one, here's one I did earlier on. So you can see that. And that's, I think that will still work on the top over here. We will see. I will show you the original anyway. So that's that one. Whilst you've got your designer series paper as well, what you want to do is you want to do some stamping. So I have got myself some garden green and real red and some Pacific points. So I'm going to do some garden green and I'm going to take the kind of the leaves from the stamp set here and I'm going to stamp them once and I'm going to then stamp them twice. I'm going to then take the second generation just so I can then look at that and then choose if I want to go for a different colour because I probably will use the second generation. Do the same. I'm going to need the, the, the holly leaves. I will then just do first generation on those ones and I will then want the berries in red. And then those ones there. Then just go ahead and then have all of those die cut out. Now, fortunately, I have a J right here with me, so my, my lovely assistant um, who will die cut all of those out for me. So that's good. So once those have all been die cut out, then what you can do is we can then ass assemble them on the car. But I'm going to also do the sentiment right here. So I've got Seasons Greetings, and I'm going to stamp these in Pacific Point. So I what I decided to do was I positioned them on like so and then pick them up with one block like that I'll just bring that in a little bit more and then pick them up with one block ink up with the Pacific points and then stamp that down like so And there we have this lovely season's greetings right here with the silver and the Pacific point, which is obviously then going to match the card base itself. So that is all of the stamping needed for tonight's project. So just pop those to one side and we will clean those later. So let's come back to this part. So let's move all of this. So we've got this one here, which was a smaller piece. We need to fold and burnish this in it. Burnish, I just put my teeth back in again. Fold and burnish this in a mountain valley. So I'm going to do one, and then I'm just going to go the opposite side on that one, and then the opposite way again. So it's like a mountain valley mountain 
or however you want to look at it, a valley mountain valley, depending on what way. That's the way that it's going to be stuck in the card. So technically, I suppose it's a valley mountain valley fold, which you want. And then just fold and burnish all of those. And this is a little stopper because what we're going to create is a little table. Um, uh, but what we want to do is we want to stick it. Make sure you stick it to the two pieces which are double thickness, not the pieces which are single, the two pieces which have been stuck to each other. Um, if you don't do that, then it won't fold correctly. So make sure you stick in it to the pieces which has been the two pieces have been stuck to. And you want to make sure that the biggest part is on the inside of the card. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue on this tab over here. And I'm going to stick that to this card here. And line it up at the bottom. So this is a stopper because um, we're going to be using it and we're going to be popping the easel on top of this cradle. The weight will push it down and it won't stick up. So this is a basic a good way of making sure that your, your legs don't spread. Yes, I realised what I said when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> um, your, your, um, yeah. Basically, they don't, they don't come apart too much. Um, so that because if you didn't have them, then the the weight on top would push that down. So that has now created this lovely stopper to stop them from going any lot wider than that. There, does that make sense? So, and then it folds flat. So when it's posted as well, this will all fold flat nicely in your envelope. So that's those pieces. What we can do now is, I suppose, I find this is easier when we are in stages to decorate this. You've got these ones right here. So I'm just going to make sure, see that I told you to make sure you try and keep it in order. Um, which is that one and that one. So I'm going to stick two of these to one to the underside and then one to this one right here. Again, so this is a vellum, so this is quite tricky. You've got to make sure you try and hide the glue. So a little bit of glue on the back parts of the silver or the white, depending on what you're using. It will show through potentially. Um, but you can probably, I'm sure you can mask it with some embellishments if it's too much. But just a little bit along here is good. And then we can then stick this down centrally and we will do that both sides. So what's everyone saying, so Jay, anything? Debbie, Kathy, Crafty Session, Sarah J, Sophie, Robin, uh, in YouTube, hello, Caroline Pendleton is there as well. Good evening. And Mary, who became an SU demonstrator first, Barry or Jay, don't ask. Um, it's always actually, um, well, I suppose technically, well, we're, 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 we're one demonstrator. We don't, we're, I'm Jay's supporting demonstrator. Um, so we're under one demonstrator number, um, so we only have to, um, yeah, we can only shop through one of it, which is J. But I think I was the, I was the main name demonstrator to start off with J, wasn't I? And then we moved over to J to be, so it's all in his name now. So any complaints, go to J. Yeah. Um, I don't <laughs> Um, so yeah, so we are actually just one demonstrator, um, which is very handy. I suppose it's, it's, it's I don't really, I don't very, we don't very know many people that have got support in demonstrator. We know there's a few out there, obviously, um, but yeah, so that's, that was that. So it's all, it's, Jay is the name and I'm, I'm under Jay's demonstratorship as a, as his, as his helper. As you can say, mm -hmm. which means I get to go to all of the events as well, um, which is nice. Well, 
we have Rachel, Charlie, and Kathy S. joining us Excellent. on YouTube. And we have Antriana in baseball. Lovely. She's loving the vellum. Yes, this is lovely vellum, this is. Um, so we'll stick this down now, like that. And then we'll work on the last one. The construction of this card is actually very, very straightforward. They say it's the decoration which takes the longest. The layering. The layering. And because it's on vellum, it does take a little bit longer to dry it as well. Um, it moves around a little bit because it's not as porous as your paper. So it doesn't absorb the glue as quickly. So it does take a little bit of time just to set up. So that's the the base of the card right here. You may be thinking, why have you done that side there? Because it's on the underside, but when it's folded and it's going to be posted, that will be on the show. Okay. So that's that. So what we want to do now is we want to then take these pieces right here. So Jay has kindly also cut me my bits for me. Um, so I will decorate those up shortly. What we want to do now is we want to do these ones here. So we want to fold and burnish these, but we want to go in opposite directions. So whatever way we do this one, we want to then fold and burnish the opposite way for the top one. Okay. And you want to do that on both pieces. Yes. Um, who was that? Sorry, Andrew. And Triana, hopefully we're saying that correct. Yes, we are both going to Vienna. Um, so yes, very looking forward. Are you a demonstrator? Are you are you going as well? If you are, look out for us. Come and say hi. Gian is on Facebook as well. Hi, Gian. Yes, it'll be a lot easier for a lot of you to come and say hi to us if you're going to Vienna than us, because obviously we see names and we sometimes it's very difficult. We won't know who you, who you are, so it'd be really nice to put a face to some names if you are going to be there. So what we've got here is I've got my two pieces. So I'm going to stick my vellum to this first now, but the part which you want to stick to is the front of it is this one here where this back part is going in because when we stick this on we want this flap to be on the inside of the card so this here is going to be the front where i'm going to put dsp so i'm just going to pop a little bit of a mark on that so i know and the same thing on this one a little bit of a mark there just so i know what one it is because they will need to go on site so, like that so those flaps are on the inside of the card okay so it's again it's just easier to do this part now than it is later on so we will just pop some glue on this. We'll see, it's a lot easier when you're just using um, normal paper because you can just put your glue all over the back. Don't really have to think about where it's going. Um, whereas with vellum, you do just need to be a little bit more careful with where you're placing it. Carol and Maureen has joined us on YouTube. Hello, everyone. Oh, Antriana's not going, so oh. she is a demo. Hopefully next time. So then we stick this on like this. And then you can hide the glue behind all of that. Um, look at that spark of the way. It's just so amazing, isn't it? That's it. Good. So I've gone quiet, concentrating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, yeah, so hopefully we get a bit of sightseeing done when we're in Vienna next week. Um, no. <laughs> it seems like it's going to be very, very busy. Um, Full agenda. I'm hoping we're going to get to some Christmas markets on either on a Friday or a Saturday evening. I don't think Thursday, Wednesday, I think, is going to be a, a write-off because we're flying at 7.10 in the morning. And Jay's travelling from Germany at <laughs> about the same time. Yeah. And, um, yes, yeah, so that's going to be that. And it doesn't finish until half eight on the Friday, on the Thursday. So, so hopefully on a Friday or a Saturday, we can go to some Christmas markets and drink some mulled wine. Was it glue vine? I think it was. So there we go. So that's those pieces. What this, I will definitely do the final decoration, but then that will then go on like so once we've done it. But I just wanted to get the DSP on now. Actually, one last thing, the DSP here, these little strips. We'll all pop these on now. I am just going to do this all the way across like that because the glue will probably spread out and then make it a little, little bit more natural. Don't drop it on the actual card itself, though. So that's that. And the final piece. Right here. Yes, I think, Jay, you posted earlier what do people want to see from on stage, don't you, didn't you? Yeah, I think it was yesterday. Yeah, so people want to see a lot of, um, we will share, I think obviously you want to see it basically, I think the most common theme was you yeah, want to yeah. see everything. We will share everything we are allowed to share. Um, but I'm sure we will do some lives, I'm sure I will be going live on, um, like probably on Facebook actually for, but we will see. And where we're going to go live just to maybe show yes, some we bits much, we can share everything except for the inside of the catalog that's it yes we are allowed to and pretty much share everything demonstrations we can't share that's everything. it live demonstrations and pretty much and the inside of the catalog but we will share with you as much as we can so good all right so that's those parts done so with the construction of this part you're going to need to take your trimmer once again and you'll need to take this here. And this is just so you know you can get your lining up correct on this one. So what you want to do is you want to position this one here and the length of your card you want it to be. So we do ours as standard 14 and a half centimetres, which is five and three, um, about five and three quarters. Okay, and then you then want to then line this one up here with the with the trimmer where you want it to be so that you've got the length of your envelope so basically if you want your envelope if you want it to be longer then you would stick it in in a different place if your envelopes are longer but you want to make sure it goes in your envelope in the correct it fits in your envelope so position it so your envelope fits in down flat and then pop a little bit of glue on this panel right here so that was on that panel like that line that up where you want it to be Just pop that down line the other end up where the the size of your card and then fold down flat like that and then when you open it up that has then stuck in position like so you don't need your trimmer to do that part anymore because the next part you can then line this up by Grabbing this one, making sure the bit there is on the top. You can pop a little bit of glue on this panel right here, like so. Line the whole thing up right here. It's just it's a mirror image of it. And then stick that bit down, like that. So, as I said at the beginning, if you're only joining, this is a case from the lovely Sarah Sayers, um, lovely friend of ours. We, I asked her if I could copy it. 
So I've done my version of it. So there we go. So that is that part. Before I stick everything together, I'm just going to, because it's just easier whilst this is flat, just to measure this gap right here. So it was three quarters of an inch. So I want to take it to half an inch. So we know we had these pieces left over, some bits left over here. I want to cut a half inch. So I use my tape again. Just to hold that in place. Half inch. And then can I get that one? It's just ever so slightly, and let's see whether or not I can get that little bit off. Yeah, I can. So I've got myself, I've used it, utilized that whole piece. And then this one can then stick on the front part here quite nicely. So unfortunately, it isn't following the pattern, but hey ho. Stick that on. So the reason I didn't cut this one at the beginning is because it depends on how big your envelope is as to how big this gap is going to be. So that's why you just need to measure that up afterwards and then stick this part on like that. Okay. And then do the opposite, same on the opposite side. Catherine Monroe has joined. Hi, Catherine. And then in like that. So this card would look great. So I was I thought, so should I go with the traditional reds and the greens for a Christmas card? But I wanted to use this designer series paper. And um, obviously, I, this, this paper obviously just is quite a cold paper. Um, but I have added the pop, pop of colour with the green on that so that's that one i do just need to pop a little bit of glue behind this part right here because it's just just flapping around a little bit too much and the beauty with vellum is it takes a little bit longer to dry up so that wasn't quite lined up so i was able to slide that Good. So that's those two pieces done. Now what we want to do is pop some glue on this panel right here. Fold the whole thing flat and then glue that together. And there we have a easel card so basically it sits down so it's a cradle or a cradle easel card so you kind of created this little cradle tabletop for it and then that sits on like so now just we want to add the decoration onto this now so i've got this part which we done earlier on and we will take some mini dimensionals and i'm just going to stick these around i'm not going too close to the edge on this because i want to tuck the um the embellishments the stuff underneath so the dimensionals may get in the way so i want it to be on this side over here and on this side over here so i can stick it a bit more there and i can do it on that one i'm sticking a lot on here sorry i'm probably giving everyone a lot of panic attacks now at the amount I've just used um, and anyone new um, will probably wonder why we've got these blue lines or we draw lines in our dimensionals it's one so it's easy enough for us to see what backing papers we have and haven't taken off simple as and it identifies them sitting on the table a little bit more when you've got a load of white cardstock around so I'm going to now decide what one I want to be my front, which is this one here. 
I will then stick this on like that. I don't think the silver and the silver clash too much actually. I think that works because that's kind of got this um, rainbow iridescent kind of look onto it. It works quite nicely. It's not a silver silver. Hi Vicky. Vicky's on both channels. Hi. So let's take these pieces right here and the bearings. Pop that to one side. And then we will have... Did you do that one there for me, Jay? Oh, no, 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 I forgot. Can you do that one there for me? Thank you. So I'm going to probably use that one and this one. I will leave those ones to one side and then let's use my berries. So I'm just going to... I've got sticky fingers. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue on this. And I think this just this little bit of green and red just I think bring this card it just takes it to another another level. I was thinking of using the red peeves on it, but I didn't know how, I didn't know where to put them or the white peeves. I was gonna actually ask Jay, so can you do that on there? Decorate it with peeves. But um maybe you can maybe have a little think about where some peeps can go on that if you want. Tommy. I've been joined by Tommy as Tommy. usual. Look, you have your own seat. Tommy. He's wanting to get on my lap. I'm being nudged. <laughs> so we do that there. And the last one. Quite fiddly these parts, well that's fine. So that's those ones done. And then we can then stick some dimensionals, mini dimensionals on the back of this. So that's that lovely holly piece. So then to finish this up now, all we want to do is I want to take um, this one here. Let's do this one. Sarah gave us what's a peeve. Oh, sorry. Um, peeves. Sorry, yes. It's our abbreviation of it. The, the peeves, it's these. What is it, Barry? It's the pearlized enamel. Oh, see, I can't say it. Pearlized enamel effects basics. So it's these. So it's basically it's liquids, liquid dots. So I will do. I will just do one quickly for you on this scrap. So it's basically it's liquid, and you can create your own or splodges or lines like that. Jay used the clear one, the white one, the other day for welt melting wax on some candles, and that's what they are. But Jay has um, has also done them on. I think you've done a video of it, Jay. Actually, how it was it's done. A reel. A reel um, where you put them and let them dry, and then you just use them as basically um, embellishments. So I'm just going to take these pieces right here. So yeah, the pearlized um, enamel affects basics. Peeps for short. <sighs> so let's pop that one in there like that. Yes, you were hearing correct, Sarah. <laughs> And then that one. Uh, I think Jay might have just dropped some peeps. I peeped on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and last one here. And then we are done. And then this is this is card done. Yes. So I told you it's decoration, which is the hardest, the, the longest part. 
And then we will finish this up. And the I think the spot of colour from the red berries on this, I think just take it. Just move it on. Step it up. Step it up. And that's going to go over like so. And there we have it. There is my case of the Cradle Easel card, which is that one there. And I think that works. The two don't clash, I don't think. I thought they were going to clash, but I think that is just absolutely stunning. And it's another take on another card, and that sits up. Obviously, it may need a little bit of, um, just to make sure once it's been folded, but it folds flat for postage, okay? And then when I take it out, they just pop it down, because your legs aren't going to spread at the bottom down here. That just goes on and then just sits up and that's amazing, amazing. i just love it mm -hmm. so the original one the peeves isn't stuck on because I don't okay see all right so i can't put, put this that's up because the peeves aren't seeing but you can see you can just take it to a little bit more to another level if you pop those um, pearlized enamel effects basics on there those dots and stick them on um, but what Jay's basically done is he's, he's dried these, done these separately, and then let them dry, and then you can then pop them on and use them as basically embellishments. But I think what I would do is I would get Jay to um, splodge the proper effect on the actual other card. Oh, okay, what now? <laughs> um, do you want to? Do you want to show them what they're like on this card here? Yeah. Yeah? And then we can then let that dry up. So I'm gonna I'm just going to hand you over to Jay. A little bit of an impromptu thing right now, just to show you, the, the because I think it looks really nice. Just make sure you don't. Can I turn it the other way? Because yeah. if I want it there, can uh -huh. can I do it that way as well? Yeah. Um, cool. And you can, um, of of course, do different sizes. The bigger they are, the longer it takes to dry. Uh, but if you do them on a piece of plastic, they do tend to spread out um, a lot um, wider than when you actually just do it on a project. They stir. They stay. Th um, they stir. More yeah, they stay buried, more like, don't they? Yeah, they don't just... bubbly. They stay bubbly. Right, I'm gonna just leave that there. Three, six, nine. Yeah, nine oh, is lovely. odd. <laughs> nine is odd. <laughs> Jay does everything in odd numbers. So, um, so, yeah, so that's that one. Obviously, we are now gonna. Just that will go careful. like that. So, we just need to be careful with that. We will manipulate that a little bit more. But can you see how those have just worked? And then that sits. Oh, I amazing. think that's amazing. That is beautiful. So the original one is, which I did. And you can see with that, the flocking, the 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 felt on it was right there. See, so see the two between it. Lovely. So we need to be careful now because that is wet. But thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, let's go over to there. There we have it. Wow. Love it. I think it's such a great card. Yeah, you just need to. You it's don't good. want to fold it too much. No. Just yet. But you can manipulate it after. Yeah, you can do. So lovely. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, seeing some lovely comments come through. So saying lovely. Sure, wow, sure is a fancy fold. It is. Um, I love it. But do check out Sarah's original post on her one. Again, the links are down below. You can see that down there. With the measurements? With the measurements as well. Centimetres. So centimetres and inches are down below as well for you. And this is Tommy for anyone who is um, unsure. And Suk is there. Oh no, there. Suk is, Suk is watching the computer and watching us um, over there. And Minnie is in the box behind us sleeping. <laughs> you can see her there. There you go. Cool. Excellent. Okay. Well, we will say good night um, now, and we will be back with you again in a 
couple of weeks time now actually i would say sunday but we won't be here so um yeah we will see you on and off next week whilst we're in vienna but for the next demonstration we'll be in a i think you said the 16th wasn't it yeah yes lovely cool thank, thank you all so much for watching we'll see you again soon thank you bye bye bye